Okay, as always, we've got two three-eighths pieces, three inches wide by six inches long, and one with a 90 degree square side, the other with a 30 degree bevel. We have a backing bar that's two inches wide by quarter inch, minimum six inches. The inspector would stamp up your plate. Like usual, you would have a CWB stamp on it. You will have the position you're welding, and then you'll have your number and coupons one, coupons two, and coupon three. Whether your first stop ends up an inch and a half from the bottom and your second one four and a half from the bottom, that does not matter. These can be switched. However, in order to be successful or to improve your chances, it's a little bit better to have your first stop on the long stretch. So that fillet weld, again, must be 5 sixteenths. We're going to weld up. We're going to stop where the inspector indicates. Make sure you have your proper indicator. In this case here, I'm using a bent over rod. I have the option of doing this weld in three passes or doing it in two passes. One way to do it is we do our straight stringer here. That has to be done no matter what. Once we come to do our second pass, we have the option of coming up and doing a stringer and leaving enough room in the middle for that third pass, or we come in and do a weave like we've seen in the flat and we make our stop. Okay, I'm just about to put my first pass in up on that square side. Remember, no larger than 5 sixteenths. The other thing I wanna mention is get comfortable on this. Not just this weld, but any weld. I have this little bar even that I can use and you know I can rest myself. The one thing I didn't mention is uh, once we finish this weld, get yourself a flashlight. We like to use our cell phones. Everyone's got a cell phone these days. Use your flashlight on it. Make sure there's no slag trapped in. Let's talk about that after though. I'm putting in a 5 16 billet weld on this square side. And I'm using a 7018 electrode right out of the rod oven, 1 8 of an inch in diameter. Now I'm using as much heat as I can handle. I'm at about 117 amps on this. I'm keeping a nice tight arc length on this and I'm traveling fairly quick. I want to make sure that I'm tying into the sides and I'm watching those toes of the weld and making sure that I'm not undercutting or creating any lack of fusion. I've got a 10 degree angle on this and we want to keep that consistent. And really the last thing we want to do is sort of angle down or push down so that we're driving metal down. We want that material to go into the weld or up a little bit. Once again, I broke that arc quickly. I don't hang out there any longer than I have to. Chip some of the slag off. Hit it with the wire brush. And if you'd like, you can grab the angle grinder afterward. So if we have to get in there with a piece of tungsten or a sharp pick, this is what we're gonna do. And this is where it's good time to sort of get in there with your flashlight and have a look. So here's where the inspector would come over and have a look at your weld and make sure that it's the correct size and then tell you to proceed. The inspector would tell you to tie in here and then complete your first stop on the bevel side. Okay, because this is vertical position, I'm gonna strike at the top. I'm gonna drag down, trace that crater and then move out. So as what that does is it gives that rod time to heat up so that we don't get a cold start. With that slag all cleaned up, I like to strike from the top down with a fresh rod. And is what that does is by the time I reach my crater, my rod is nice and warm and I can move in, I can trace that crater. I'll move out a little bit faster than usual. And then once I hit the end of that crater, I'll go back to my regular travel speed and keep those same techniques I was using before. All right, so that was quick. Okay, so the idea is that we don't have any great undercut. Our bead is the right size. So now it's time to do that second pass. My technique is that I like to go quick across the middle and I like to pause on the sides a little bit. Always moving with this. We don't want to crown up in the middle. Okay, with that square side all cleaned up once again, we're working on the bevel side. This is our second weld. I chose to do this in two passes, so that means I'm going to be weaving up against that bevel side and washing up into that fillet weld. We go quick across the middle and we pause on the side making sure that we're pausing on the side so that it doesn't build up in the middle. Now, the important thing here is that I'm not climbing too fast. I'm only coming up about half the diameter of the rod at a time, watching those toes. Once I approach that stop, 
I'm going to break the art quickly. Here we can see that I've melted into the backing bar that previous fillet weld and that bevel side. So I'm marrying all three, the backing bar, the bevel side, and that previous weld. So I really found myself starting to dig with this. I'm sitting at about 118. I'm gonna turn my amperage down a little bit. What that's gonna do is gonna cool my puddle off a bit and uh, give me a little bit more control. Okay, so inspector said everything is good now. I'm going to tie into my weave and I'm gonna try and finish this off in one pass. So I did turn my heat down a little bit. I'm at 115 right now. Once again, we're doing that tie-in on that weave. So we're coming down from the top. We're lighting up, we're heating it up. We're tracing that crater. This one's a little bit bigger now. So we got to take our time, move out a little bit quicker. And then as we get to the end, we go back to our regular travel speed, watching the toes of the well, keeping a nice tight arc length and making sure we're nice and consistent the whole way. Here you can see a little hiccup and that's where my cable sort of got hung up and it caused me to move a little bit. You want to make sure that your welding cables are free at all times. Okay, so here's the trade-off for doing weave. I'm now required to do a stop and a restart now. Right right where my other tie-in is. Do not put two stops and restarts in the same spot. This is where a weld can fail. Turns out that my stop is actually up here and my second one ended up, you know, about here. They are staggered a little bit, but it's very important not to line these up too close to each other. If a weld is gonna fail, it's gonna end up being on that stop and restart. Okay, so now it's time to fill, and I'm gonna do this in stringer passes. I'm not gonna weave anymore. I'm gonna start on my square side, and I'm gonna bring it right up here. I'm gonna put one in the middle, and I'm gonna put one up against that bevel side. I'm gonna revert back to the square side, and I'm gonna do the same, probably two layers to fill this up and then I'll be ready to cap. Coming right back to that square side, I'm doing a straight stringer now. We're not weaving anymore. The rest of this groove will be stringer passes. I'm keeping it nice and tight. I'm not weaving too much because I don't want to undercut. I don't want to trap slag in there. So just keeping it nice and consistent like usual all the way to the top. There's no stops, there's no restarts. So this was my fill pass. You can see here that I'm flush or just under about a sixteenth because now it's time to cap. And I'm going to cap this in four welds. So here I want to sort of bite into that edge, the side of the plate on that square side, but I don't want to overlap it too much. You know, maybe a sixteenth, no more than an eighth because we don't want a huge wide cap. And there you have it, folks. I'm gonna let this cool down. I'm gonna take it down and we're gonna measure the cap.